Guys, there might be something to it. I actually touched a chainsaw, chainsawed up a few trees, and of course, I'm shooting a video for you in beautiful northern Wisconsin, which means we got a great case outcome because that's what happens when I chainsaw up trees. We win cases, and that's exactly what happened out of the Southern District Court of Illinois, specifically from East St. Louis. I feel like there's a Simpsons reference in there. Ye, ye St. Louis? At any rate though, the Illinois assault weapons ban has been placed on hold by District Court Judge McGlynn, who has issued a preliminary injunction. That's right, he has done what the Northern District Court of Illinois refused to do, as well as I believe the Seventh Circuit, when a Naperville gun dealer challenged the law. But now the Southern District has stepped up, has stepped into the game, and has, well, they've done what they, we needed them to do for now. Now, Judge McGlynn was very, very careful to note that, look, this doesn't mean that the case is over. We're going to be hearing the merits of the case. However, he was satisfied that the plaintiffs in this case met their burden, which is basically in a nutshell to show that there would have been irreparable harm had the lawsuit or had the law, the ban in this case, been able to proceed, combined with the fact that, look, they're likely or there's a substantial chance of them prevailing at the end of the day. So the Illinois assault weapons ban is definitely one of the worst ones that we've seen, although I may have a worse one coming up that I've just been researching about, so stay tuned. Unfortunately, some states are really going a little nuts here. But what this means is, look, the law is not going to be going into effect unless it gets reversed by the Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals. Also, that Naperville gun dealer who lost in the Northern District Court of Illinois and then lost once more in the Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals, indicated, I think, two days ago that he intends to appeal this case all the way up to the U.S. Supreme Court. So we're going to be getting some very interesting assault weapons bans, uh, language and instructions probably coming from the U.S. Supreme Court, potentially on this Illinois case. Guys, I've done one very specific video, I think back in January, exactly on this case. So I'll make sure that that's going to be linked in the comments or in the description box below. But there's some interesting spicy language that came out of this where the judge said, and I'm, I'm reading here from my daughter, who's my helpful intern here shooting this video. She's 14. Give her a round of, of applause in the comments section, everyone. So uh, he said, this is Judge McGlynn now talking. More specifically, can the Protect Illinois Communities Act be harmonized with the Second Amendment, Amendment of the United States Constitution and with Bruin? Bruin, of course, is the mammoth case that came out in June of 2022 that established that, look, firearms regulations and laws, things like assault weapons bans are okay, but if they fall within the historical tradition in the United States. He goes on to say, that is the issue before the court. The simple answer at this stage in the proceedings is likely no. Now, if you're wondering what the heck is the Illinois Department of Justice or Attorney General's office, whoever the heck is supporting this law, what the heck are they arguing? Well, they're saying that, look, banning assault weapons and highly regulate them is absolutely within the nation's historical tradition because there were no such things as assault weapons back at the founding of the Second Amendment in 1791, which, of course, is ridiculous on numerous different levels. But I just want to take a moment to throw a couple of them out at you. Number one, we're talking about the laws and regulations. So they're saying that, look, it's absolutely within the laws and regulations and historical tradition in the United States to ban assault weapons. They say that in the same breath that they say there were no assault weapons back in 1791. Okay, so how can there be any laws or regulations banning what did not exist? So that's, you know, fair question number one. Question number two, of course, is the fact that obviously the definition of assault weapon was different back then. An assault weapon was basically a rifle. That was an assault weapon back then. And then later on, of course, 1830s, 1840s, we saw the introduction of revolvers and things like that, at least a little bit more progressively mainstream. And once more, the definition of assault weapon changed. And of course, this all goes without saying that the definition of assault weapons incredibly made up, but that's neither here or there. It also goes without saying that, look, we also have some common use language that's out there, right? We cannot ban ordinary weapons that are in common use. So the court in Bruin specifically said, handguns, good to go. AR-15s? We may have done a video talking about the fact that AR-15s are literally the most common weapon in America. Depending on which statistic you want to believe, it could be as low as 15 million of them made or as many as closer to 25 million of them made. Either way you cut it, 
it's easily going to be the most common weapon in America. We actually did a whole video talking about which weapons are the most common. We looked at manufacturing language and all that kind of stuff. So be sure to check through. I'll see you hopefully if I can get that up in the description box below as well. But bottom line, it doesn't matter how you look at this, whether you want to try to buy it on the premise of, well, look, you know, uh, it's within the historical tradition because they didn't exist back then. Well, all right, then according to your own language, then there can be no language banning what did not exist, therefore falls outside the historical tradition. Or looking at it from the perspective of, well, look, they didn't ban the most dangerous rifles back then, which would have been the comparable so-called assault weapon at that time, meaning once more, we're good to go. Or looking at it from the common use perspective of these are the most popular firearms in America, therefore good to go once more. So it's going to be interesting to see how this whole thing plays out. Obviously, the anti-gunners are frankly living in their own world where they can read a case and then just absolutely ignore it and decide that it says why when in reality it said two or something else. Hopefully you get my point and you follow me on that. Guys, I'm getting a little cold stand out here, so we're going to leave it at this for now. But if you want me to do a deeper dive on this when I get back to the home base, let me know in the comments section below. Be sure to give my daughter a heads up. Thank you in the comment section too. Uh, I can see her eye smiling just above kind of the, uh, oh, no, she's, she's doing the I'm an embarrassed teenager look. This is fantastic. Oh, we got eye contact now. There it is. Okay. So guys, we appreciate it very much. Hopefully you got something out of this video. Again, if you want a deeper dive, happy to do that. Let me know below. Don't forget to, of course, please click like, comment, subscribe, share all the YouTube things. Make sure you don't miss any of our future content videos coming out. And as always, I will see you in the next one.